Welcome to Coffee with the Chair. I'm Teresa Aronson from the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce. It is our pleasure, our honor to facilitate this uh, show every single month. We will be visiting with Kathy Townsend, Board of County Commission Chair, in just a few moments. But we wanted to start today. We are in the age of social distancing, so we're starting. Six feet away. Six feet away. <laughs> we got to stay six feet away. So I'm going to start with today's guest for the county because we need to talk about something else very serious in the community that we need to get on everybody's minds. Um, so please welcome the Communications Director for the St. Lucie County, for St. Lucie County, uh, Eric Gill. Eric, Thank you. welcome. Thanks for having me. Many people know you. You've been with me for, I mean. We, we, I've been behind the scenes yeah, on the show the for a while. Yeah, you're the voice from <laughs> The voice beyond. over the speakers, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just discussing, you picked these chairs out a million years ago. So you and I have been doing this together for a very, very long time. Yeah. But today you're our guest, which is unusual. It is. Thanks for having me on. We wanted to come on and talk about hurricane season. Yeah. Um, and how we're handling hurricane preparations in the middle of a global pandemic. So the, we can't pump the brakes on uh, hurricanes either. Is no, that what you're telling me? I wish me? we could. <laughs> yeah, It'd be I mean, a whole lot cooler not, if we could. We're not effectively pumping the brakes no. on either. <laughs> no. And so we we want to warn residents and get the message out that they need to work COVID into their hurricane plans. So, I mean, it does bring up a good point because if there is evacuations, they've got to go to a shelter. How is that going to work? Do we have a, you guys obviously have a plan, right? Yes, we've been working on a plan since March. You know, okay. We kind of thought about this early on because we knew COVID-19 wasn't something that was going to go away quickly, unfortunately, mm -hmm. until there's a vaccine. So we typically, we have about 12 shelters through with the school district that we have identified as shelters. But typically the last three hurricane seasons, which we've had to activate, unfortunately, we've only opened three, four, five at the max. Um, this year, if we have to activate, we may open eight, 10, you know, so it'll be a little more labor intensive on us and the school district. We'll also be looking at um, doing temperature checks like we do now with our public buildings and health screenings, but the capacity in those shelters will be a lot less. Yeah. So th that's the plan for now. And also to, to tell residents, you may need to consider other options than a shelter. Well, yeah, because what happens if somebody does show up at the shelter and they are running a temperature? Yeah, they were still trying to work out that detail. Okay. <laughs> you know, whether we have a you COVID. You mentioned it, so I was like, ah. Yeah, whether we have a COVID wing or a yeah. COVID shelter that we send people to, you know, but it does create a lot of challenges, especially with our special needs shelter, which is for medical necessities like dialysis patients, those who need constant uh, power for oxygen. They we have can't to send, be. They, yeah, we can't yeah. really send them anywhere else. You they know? have to be in the fence center because that is set up for that. And they have to pre-register for that. So if you do have special medical needs and you haven't already pre-registered for the special needs shelter, please do so now on our website, sinklessyco.gov slash EOC. And you can find the link there to pre-register. Same thing with our pet friendly shelter. We do yep. Westwood uh, is our high school or Westwood Academy is our pet friendly shelter. Uh, we, it helps if you pre-register so that we can make sure your dog has its you know, kennel cough shots and everything and is up to speed there, or your cat, and that we can process those quicker in the event that we need to activate. But this year we're asking folks, you know, unless you live on the barrier island or an area that's known to, prone to flooding, yeah. you may want to consider sheltering in place instead of going to a shelter or going to a friend that's west of 95 or somewhere close by, um, rather than taking the risk of going to a public shelter. Yeah, I mean, that's got to be a tougher decision than it normally is, to be honest with you. And it is a tough decision on whether or not to leave your property to, to go. But this year, even more, there's an added risk. Absolutely. And it's never, you know, we want to remind folks that uh, shelters are kind of life rafts, not luxury cruise boats. Yeah. You know, it's a, yeah. it's a place of last resort. So if you have family or friends, but I know people that would always go to hotels during, you yeah. know, and now, I mean, now hotels are starting to open back up. So that is an option. But you also want to check where, if you're leaving the area, you know, are you going into a COVID hotspot area? And yeah. you know, make sure you bring hand sanitizer and wipes and, you know, hand and washing. They're open now. Hotels are open now. We don't yeah. know what's going to happen in the future. In you September know, or, yeah. September. But the registration part is not, um, um, that's usually the case. You usually have to register for your special needs. So this is yes. not COVID related. Yeah, so. no, special needs registration and pet registration we've been doing for, for several you, years now. Yeah, yeah. You always had to do that. Yeah. And you do it now just in case. Absolutely. Yeah. Just in case. Because um, I know a lot of people, I don't have kennel cough for my dog because we've never kenneled it. 
So yeah, so, and you'll require it. That's yes. good to know. Yeah, absolutely. All right, very good. Um, as far as evacuation routes, we're good with that. Yeah, They're nothing's the changed same. there. Yeah, nothing's changed. I mean, you've got Crosstown now, which is an additional evacuation route. Yeah. That's probably. I know some of the older maps haven't been updated yet, but that is a new east-west route to help get people out to 95 and turnpike and out of the area if you're planning to leave but yeah. again if you are planning to leave you want to check where you're going to make sure you're not going into another area where there might be a high case of uh, COVID. And what is the recommendation for supplies on hand? Is it any different during no, COVID? No it's still three to five days you know okay. um, medicine, water, food, um, you should have plenty of toilet paper still, so I don't know why that's still an issue. But somebody does. Somebody does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody in your neighborhood does. Somebody, Help, somebody you know yeah. has plenty of toilet paper. Yeah. And then again, you know, we I know Howard Tipton, our county administrator and public safety director, stressed this. Check on your neighbors this time of year. If you know folks need help, you know, trimming trees is another thing that yeah. should have been done. We've all been home for. You know, a few weeks you had time to get that done, which is which people have been doing, luckily, and it's yeah. caused some you know backlog at Waste Pro and for that pickup. Well, I was just so going to tell you, Waste other... Pro said don't do it for a while because they were getting overwhelmed, but they you were. can do it again. Yes, we need to start doing it, or you know, d don't do it if there's a hurricane in the Atlantic. That's the wrong time to do yeah, it. Yeah, if we have a name storm. Yeah, don't, don't start do trimming it. and so put them out. So it doesn't have to be a hurricane. Just if it's a name Absolutely. storm stop trimming yeah yeah and they always say because they're worried about the branches becoming projectiles but i think more uh, importantly and as a hazard that stuff washes into drainage and blocks drainage and, and it blocks canals yeah. and ditches and that's where it leads to a lot more flooding and so. that leads to property damage so yeah. there's many many reasons Absolutely. and hopefully people will listen we've got ours done we did sea grapes recently you did the sea grapes we did ours too somebody. we have a lot of bamboo My, oddly enough I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tons of bamboo. It, it makes a great wall. Sea grapes do too. But. Yeah, so we've made the great wall of bamboo uh, around our house. But yeah, so, so okay, three days, five days. You've always had to register evacuation routes. Is there someplace they can check their current evacuation route with the addition? Yeah, that's on the website, stlucco.gov slash EOC. Okay. And uh, all that information there is there's also tips of what you need to have for your hurricane plan. Add masks. Yes, this your, year, masks, yeah. wipes, hand sanitizers. All that stuff needs to be added to your go, I call it a go, go bag. bag. Yeah, like we're spies or your something. bug out bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it sounds, it's, it's a little bit, it's nicer than, you know, hurricane prepared. Survival, yeah. It's <laughs> survival, <laughs> survival kit, so we yeah. call it, yeah. But it, you know, it has uh, caused us to rethink things, um, you know, like, during this pandemic, our EOC activated. We limited the amount of people that we normally have at the EOC because the 911 operators are there seven days a week, 24 seven, we don't want to expose them. So as we move in from a staffing perspective, I had a reporter call me the other day and says, when you do briefings, will the press be allowed out to the EOC this year? Mm. It's a good question. I, you know, we still need to work through that. We probably won't, or if we do, you know, they'll have, they'll be subjected to the temperature screenings and, yeah. and and then they'll be locked down there with us. Is there us. a way to do a shared camera feed? Or? Well, we can, and we yeah. do that. We already do that. We push you know, all the uh, broadcasts are streamed live to uh, Facebook and, yeah. and the internet so they can take that feed. And then we can set up a line or a text for them to submit questions to me so then I can just, you know, on behalf of John Shaman or Greg Duncan, they ask you know, this, and then we can still have that transparency and they can ask questions, but it cuts down on the risk and exposure in our facilities. Very good, so. very good. I like it. I'm confident you have a plan, but I'm going to send everybody to the website yes. one more time. The, the key is to, for residents to have a plan, and that's yeah. stlucco.gov slash EOC, and they can see all that information, the links to pre-register for the special needs or the pet shelter, and uh, just start thinking about that. You know, now it, that hurricane season here is, you know, typically it doesn't flare up till September for us is the worst month. Yeah, September but is especially egregious. Historically, typically. back yeah. to 1910, I think it, we've had Francis, Gene, yeah, but even Andrew. going back. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you're right. Like what, I've done some history. over a hundred years, you've done your history I on. I was here for hurricane. the county centennial. That's so. super upbeat. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> but I am. I wasn't be... here originally in 1904. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's I knew get that you were clear. old, Eric. But well, glass half full. Uh, this is something else to concentrate on right now. That's yeah, true. Yeah, That's true. yeah. I want to be a positive person <laughs> in today's environment. So forget everything else for five minutes and get your Make, plan together. And it's you know we always recommend when you go to the grocery store just pick up an extra gallon of water. Or, or if you Instacart, I'm a big fan That's of Instacart. True. I don't know what that is. But. Instacart, they deliver your groceries uh, to you. My wife does the order and you pull up and they put it in your trunk and. That's just as effective. Yeah. yeah. I like to stay out of the grocery store. I feel like it's doing my part. I don't blame you. 
Yeah. I, I year round. I don't like shopping, <laughs> so it's, it's not hard for me. Yeah. You can't you can't impulse shop either. That's true. So I like. I get that. yelled at that because I don't stick to the list when I do. My that. husband's never seen a sauce he didn't want to buy. Yeah. Mine's snack cakes, little Debbie's. <laughs> A 12 year old boy. All right, we digress. <laughs> That's true. We're getting off the rails. I know we are. Um, it's easy to do on these shows. You always yell at me as a producer. You're I like, know. stay on topic, but then you I see, you get up here and you start chit chatting. And it's easy to check because we don't have the audience to. Nope. You know. there, everybody's held hostage. We could go on for days. <laughs> we're not going to, though. No, we're not. We're actually going <laughs> to get off now. We're going to swing, uh, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with Board of County Commission Chair Kathy Townsend. Welcome back to Coffee with the Chair. I am joined now by the one, the only, the Board of County Commission Chair. That's Kathy Townsend. Welcome. Good morning. Always nice to see you. We haven't seen each other. We've been doing Facebook. Yes. Which I have enjoyed. And frankly, I think the viewers enjoy it too because it's a little more interactive. Well, people, they, I think more people can get on and join it because so many times there's stuff that happens and you can't attend mm -mm. and they can attend virtually from their office wherever they are. And I'm noticing that. Mm -hmm. We're noticing that there's a great deal of people that typically would never come into the audience. Because they don't have time. No. And they're joining us on Facebook Live. So I love it. We're going to do a watch party. Um, after the taping is ready for viewing on TV and on YouTube, um, we're hoping to do a watch party so Let that me know. people. Yeah, maybe I'll do it on my page. Too. I hope. I think that would be best because then if they do have questions, we'll both be on there on the watch party to be able to okay. answer them. Just let me know when. Yeah, we we we're gonna give that a whirl. Um, crazy times. We've got hurricane season coming up. And Eric and I just talked about there are plans, contingency plans. We have to be a little extra careful in today's day and age. Um, I know there's a lot going on at the county. Mm -hmm. We won't get into that. There'll be a whole slew of that on the news later on. We don't know where the county stands yet on mask mandates. And I'm not going to pull you onto the carpet right now. This isn't going to air till July. Everybody will have known by then <laughs> how you felt about that. Um, we at the chamber, I can say, are pro-mask, and uh, we are pro-mask for one reason. It will help us slow the virus and keep business open. Our main goal is to keep business open, keep the reopening process going and progressing. And uh, when we see uh, spikes, we fear that there might be additional, not only additional restrictions, but people are afraid to go out. So, for example, my parents went out to a store. They wanted to go in a store. They walked in, and they were one of very few people wearing masks, and they no longer felt safe, so they turned around and didn't patron that store. And so I don't think these pe people don't understand masks as, as a bit of a reassurance to shoppers. It's a reassurance to people that are out wanting to spend money in our community, and we want them to spend money in our community. You no, know, we want them to spend money. We want businesses to yeah. stay open. But it's a much debated topic. and It's hotly debated. It is. So we're going to be talking about that at 10 o'clock. And like you said, when this airs, they'll already know the verdict and they'll already know the outcome because it'll yeah. be decided. And we just want to give a voice. It's a very, and I understand, and people can believe whatever they want to believe. I don't want to take that away from them. I just see wearing masks as a small sacrifice if it allows us to stay open. And, and look, Data indicates it does help slow the progression. I am not a scientist. I am not a doctor. <laughs> I can only read the data. I mean, if people that are going to get up today and be anti-masks are uh, scientists or doctors, I'll be more than happy to listen to yeah, them. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who shows and who, you know, because, you know, I see both sides. I do. I see both sides. and I um, absolutely do. I'm, I'm, I've read every email and I have taken every phone call. So I see people think it's you know um, you're you're encroaching on their civil liberties. Okay, I get it. We're telling you to do something that you don't want to do, but really we're asking you to be conscientious to your fellow man. But I understand. Yeah. Yeah, and there, I mean, it'll be interesting to see because I do think there's supposed to be some physicians there today as well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens this morning. I'm kind of interested too. I am going to be there, and I, I'm, and um, the chamber has submitted a statement to you, mm -hmm. and so hopefully that'll get read. I like to stay for public comments, and um, but here's the problem: today is our fishing frenzy. Ah, our okay. fishing tournament starts today, 
and I have to get into something a little cooler to stand out in the sun for about three and a half hours today, starting at one. So I'm not sure how long. We'll be done. The, the meeting is only going to be around an hour, hour and a half. Well, and if, we if you allow public no, comment. No, it will only be that because of our schedules. Okay. Of what we, I called this emergency meeting on Monday. Okay. And I had to uh, work it around everybody's schedules. So there's limitations. I have a one o'clock meeting. Okay. Um, I, I have a meeting before that. So uh, worst case scenario, if we don't reach an outcome today, we have another date set for next Wednesday okay. uh, to bring back to finish the meeting if we have to. Yep. But it'll be interesting. So yeah, and I and I've tried to say it's so funny. Public comment is so controversial, and you guys do limit them, and I appreciate. Well, you that. have to, but yeah. yeah, you have to. But you know, every time the line starts to to, you're like, okay, there's only three people left, and then <laughs> ten more people. It just there's it's, always it's and there's an always somebody that line. wants to be the last person. And I understand that too. I mean, there's a, there's a method to their madness, and it's okay, and they have a right to speak, and absolutely, you know, and I and I I love it when people come out and talk about that because it helps me understand their feelings and where they're coming from. So I, I think public comment's a great thing. The sad mm -hmm. thing is people don't understand that once you talk and you're done, you can't come back up. Oh, they want to come back up? They, they, they want to rebuttal. Come, well, no, because like, say you spoke and then 20 people spoke and then there was something that you feel you can offer yeah. or something else you wanted to say, you want to come back up. We cannot allow that. We'd be there all night long, right? Yeah. Plus that's why there's a time limit of part of the policy. So yeah. You, you're not allowed to come back up once you've spoke, um, because then that means that we would have to let everybody else come back up if they wanted to. Yeah. And we have to hold you to the three minutes, because again, you know, if we just let everybody talk for 20 minutes or whatever they wanted to talk, so there has to be some order to, to get Absolutely. the meetings through. I mean, it's great that they come and they can always email, they can call, I'll listen to them all day long on my phone, call the office, but yeah, there has to be order and that's why there's three minutes and you can speak once. So it, it does frustrate some people, I think, but th I think they understand at the end of the day. I think it's necessary and mm -hmm. I am a big fan of it, but, but it does get long sometimes, you know. But that's okay. Yeah. They, they it's deserve the to be process, heard. It's the process and it's mm -hmm. the American way and everybody, you're right, yep, everybody deserves to be heard. Well, what else can we talk about at the county um, besides, you know, well, the obvious? I mean, Let's it's just crazy times because like you and Eric talked about, it's hurricane season. But, you know, I think a lot of people really have a lot of the hurricane supplies already at home. I do. Like when, when we were getting ready yeah. for COVID, I said, I'm going to go ahead and do everything I have to do to prepare for hurricane. And if we need it during COVID because something happens, I already have it. So moving in that direction, I'm prepared for hurricane. I did my flashlights, my batteries. So did I, I bought the fuel for my generator. You know, I, I'm prepared if something was to come up. I don't, I even like took my plants out of the pots and planted them in the ground to have less to move in. And um, I think that COVID has helped make people a little bit more uh, prepared for prepared. hurricane this they've, time. Ha they've had time to be at home to see what they need to do. And I mean, Really, I, th I would hope that most people still have their shutters and their plywood and stuff like that, that they're not going to have to rush out to be in the stores to get all that. If not, that's something else they can do. We um, are just updating the Portmaster plan mm -hmm. that's coming up. We have most recently at the county done the five-year strategic plan. Mm -hmm. We're getting ready to go into budget um, to do the budget. So things are moving rapidly. It's still business as usual. Um, yeah. The airport, the hangar is getting ready to open. That's out for an RFP right now. We have several people interested in that. Good. And um, probably by August, we'll have a decision as to who's going to be the tenant there. And we'll be having the ribbon cutting for our new hangar, which is going to stimulate the entire airport. Um, there's businesses still out there struggling in the food industry. Yeah. Some of them. So I want to encourage everybody to still continue to do takeout because there's actually still some restaurants that have not reopened like the Tiki restaurant. Many. They've not, they've not opened, but they're doing takeout. People don't realize they're open for takeout. So there's just research to see the restaurants that are still a little bit struggling. And maybe some of those that are really, really full, I don't want to take away from them, but you know, just be mindful of those that are still out there struggling, trying to keep their doors open and support them with their to-go's. Well, we're doing the Small Business Big Challenge mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. Children's Services Council where we pick a local restaurant. And when we say local restaurant, people get mad at me. They're like, oh, Jersey Mike's isn't local. But there's a franchise owner mm -hmm. who lives and works in this community and donates to our nonprofits. It's not a corporate entity right. in some other land. It is, they are here, they are right. a part of our community. So we pick local restaurants 
that um, we designate as our, our challenge partner for the week, and we've been sending people there mm -hmm. to pick up stuff on Friday, matching profits up to $1,000 to give to a nonprofit. That's been going really well. Yeah, it has. I've, I've followed it, and I've went to a couple of the places. Yeah, too, to yeah. Do that. That, that was great. That was just, that was a good idea to do that, too. So, yeah, and I, you know, um, COVID has affected a, a lot of things. It's affected us here at the government level. It's mm -hmm. obviously affected businesses, the chamber, <sighs> uh, the nonprofits with their fundraising. We've had to think outside the box. Um, you know, there's a lot of moving parts to all of this, but we're maneuvering through everything. And I think a lot of this is going to become the new normal. Somewhat. And I, yeah. And I think that also, you know, like for example, the chamber, even when you go back to having your stuff, I think you're still going to be able to do things virtually because you're going to get a better attendance because mm -hmm. I think it's opened up eyes to say, you know what, we've always done this and you can't be here, but now knowing how Zoom and the meeting place and all those work, you're going to open it up to be able to do that. So you're going to have two audiences now coming into stuff, which is going to change a lot of the fundraising ways, I think. It, it is, and um, we have been noticing that we sometimes mm -hmm. get a couple hundred viewers live when we Facebook yeah. Live. So we will be doing that probably a lot of it virtually. I did want to mention people like us, the Chamber, we are 57% um, financed through our membership dues. And anytime there's a crisis in the recession, it affects you. membership dues are the first to go because they're optional. And mm -hmm. we understand that. You have to pay your electric. You don't have to pay your membership to a gym or an organization such as ours. And then another 26% is event-driven, which we've been mm -hmm. unable to do. So people see me on these shows and they see me on the coffee and they think we're part of government and they think that we're a government fund, but we are not. So we struggle. But we also have a mission to help business prosper. And, and, and that's our mission. That is solely mm -hmm. That's our why mission. You're here. Yeah, that is our mission. That's why we're here. And so we have decided, again, thinking outside the box, we sourced 20,000 masks at the beginning of this and we're selling them for very, very, you know, we got them at a certain price. I think we sold them for one penny more because we want to be able to replenish and keep doing it. And so we want to be able to do something for business that is not, is cost effective for us because we are you know, hemorrhaging money right now, <laughs> and um, and but still serve our mission and our businesses. So that's what we are doing to contribute. We also do uh, referrals. Everybody's doing counseling. There's a virtual mm -hmm. business center. There's SCORE. There's SBDC. There's, and so we don't want to duplicate efforts. We're trying to find a niche in which we can help, and we've decided that supplying resources is a good one and so that's what we're working on and we're looking well, and we can and I'm sure we can help you at the county level too through our emergency so. operations and the cares act and stuff yeah we can probably do something and and, and I, I appreciate the fact that you're not giving them away even though I know that there are people that need them that can't afford them there are avenues for people to be able to get those yeah I mean because I'm a firm believer that when you give something away it has no value and then therefore people don't appreciate it so if you have to have something invested you're going to take care of it and you're going to appreciate a little bit more and so, use them and, and use right. them correctly because yeah because you purchased it you you purchased it for a reason yeah and so um i know you've sent an email and yes. i'm sure that there'll be conversations with ron out at the emergency operations in howard and um, we'll we'll get something together i appreciate I'm sure. that yeah because sure we will. really just want to give it to them at a very cost effective price nobody in in their it may get to a point where masks are hard to find again because more and more mm -hmm. people are mandating them. We want to keep that supply open for our county. And so that's what we're looking to do. That's the service we're okay. providing. Perfect. Good. I, they're, they're giving us the fingers. I know you have a very important meeting to go to. I do. I know. And <laughs> I think that they want you to be able to get there and probably read the hundreds of messages that have been put well, on your I, phone. I, I was up till midnight last night reading them, and I'm oh, sure God. there's been a whole lot more coming this morning. I've seen my emails, and I do want to read them. So Yes. So I don't want to keep you. That's I know okay. this is very, very important, and I want you to be able to get there and, and feel prepared. Well, thank you. Thank you for having this. Thank you I for appreciate coming it. on. Thank you for doing this in the middle of all this in an emergency <laughs> meeting okay. and everything. It, it is what it is, and that's my job. I know. And I'll get with you on the watch party so that we yeah, can hang out and answer when. questions. Yeah. I'm afraid that after... When it's time to do the watch party, the decision will already be made, and hopefully by then people have, you know, calmed down from whichever viewpoint they're at and whatever decision you guys make because both are unknown. And, you know, in regards to the decision, you're not going to make everybody happy. And Never. So, yeah, and so for me, you know, whatever decision is made, whatever side disagrees with it, I just hope that they can understand how the decision was met and just be respectful. I do. I hope so, too. 
We can help. We can help. <laughs> well, thanks again. Thank you to everybody here in the studio. I know the camera crew has to get up to cover that as well. <laughs> so we're going to sign off. Thanks for joining us. Join us on YouTube. We're going to do a watch party. That announcement will come on this county, uh, the Chamber's Facebook page, stlucychamber.org. Have a great day, everybody.